Okay, okay, okay. I know, guys, that I said the last, 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 last episodes were gonna be my last on day three. But, like, you guys keep coming up with some good comments for me to try. I just had to try this next one out, guys. And as always, I can't go to day four yet without the creator's permission. Good morning, everybody. Fevernini here. And welcome back to your boyfriend. Okay, so the reason why I really wanted to come back to this before day four is officially officially comes out is I literally saw this comment from Zora. Zora said, there is a way for all the characters to survive. And that really piqued my interest. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is follow the prompts that Zora gave us and see if indeed we're able to keep them alive. Anyways, <laughs> I forgot that's actually a possibility. Welcome Nina, you two have fun. I'll try. Anyways, uh, it starts out, first of all, Zora said that the very first option we pick is going to be a dot dot dot. So we're gonna go ahead. I actually never picked this option before, so this will be a whole different route. So dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. You wanna have coffee? I don't know. The discomforting silence only grows. Still unsure and confused by the situation, I couldn't find words. It was just so sudden. He seems to take the hint and pulls his hand away from mine. Looking away, he chuckles awkwardly. Hey, I I get it if you don't want me to be your boyfriend. I just thought I'll take the chance and ask you out. If he is guilt tripping me, he's doing a terrible job. But at least he's taking the hint rather than pushing it. Well, it's just that I don't even know you, so... Don't worry, I get it. He says, not at all expressing disappointment, but more along the lines of showing understanding. Huh? Wow, I've never used the dot dot dots before. Okay, wait a minute, what? I, sh I suppose I'll be a little weirded out too if some random stranger came up and asked me out on a date. Flattered, but still a little uneasy. Interesting. He's taking the rejection well. No tantrums or pressure of any sorts. Thank goodness. I better get going then. It was nice talking to you though. What? Oh my gosh. Wait, is that actually, what? No, 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 it can't be that easy. He says, looking back over to me and giving me a smile before getting himself off the bench and taking his leave. This is so interesting. I watched him walk away, feeling sort of terrible for how things ended the way they did. Maybe I'll apologize to him if I ever see him again. I stay in the park a little while longer after that odd event. I didn't know if I should go after him or just shake it off and enjoy the rest of my afternoon. Interesting, so already we're off the bat on a whole different route. Okay, wait, let's see. I wander around the city a little bit more, visiting places I normally wouldn't visit. Okay, so this is when we go to the rose shop, right? After leaving the part, I still can't get that man out of my head. It's baffling. On one hand, I'm glad that he didn't keep harassing me about going out with him, but at the same time, I wish he had stayed around for a little bit and just talked to me like a normal person. Maybe I've been feeling lonely lately? Okay, so this is like not, this is going down the route, I guess, of not entirely loving him and then also not entirely hating him. So kind of in the middle, huh? I came across a local florist shop that I remember passing on a few of my downtown walks. I've always been meaning to stop in and pick up some flowers for the apartment, but I could never seem to find the time. Well, I have time now and I could use a diversion, so why not? Okay. Let's go ahead and see that. I'm definitely gonna see him again, so I wonder what my reaction's going to be. Walking in, I look around and take in the rather pleasant aroma of the shop. I wander past the quaint display of flower arrangements, potted plants, and small gift bags of papri. I had a particular purchase in mind. Interesting. Let's see. From a rustic wooden shelf display containing the flowers and various house plants came a lovely, pungent fragrance from the deep red roses. Being mindful that some still had their thorns, I reached out to pick one. I feel a hand brush against mine. I put my hand away quickly and glance at the person that I didn't see on the other side of the display. Ooh, fancy seeing you here. The man from the park peeped upon seeing me and gives me a smile before pulling the rose out. I didn't know you shopped here too. I, I, I don't, I say, startled by his presence. The man then gestured to me with a finger over his lips. Shh, it's a small shop. There's no need to raise your voice. His comment rubs me the wrong way, but I try to 
compose myself. <laughs> I remember this. Did you follow me here? I whispered harshly, unsure if crossing paths with him again was a pure coincidence or if I needed to worry about him after all. What? Of course not. He looks a little hurt by my accusation. I come here often, almost every day, you know? There's a bit of relief. He fumbles around with the rose in his hand and his eyes stay shyly focused on the ground. I love flowers. This little shop is the only one nearby, so I come here a lot to see what new bouquet they had made and if they have any on sale. I'll admit that sometimes I get a glimpse of you through the window of the diner that you work at, and lately, I've been meaning to walk in to finally say hi, but I lose my nerves and stay out. Okay, so the next one I have to say, I guess that's not too bad. Instead of being like, you're watching me. No, we're gonna be like, I guess that's not too bad. Maybe I'm overreacting. I guess that's understandable. I muttered. It's difficult for me to notice people when I'm walking the same path almost every day, like a mindless robot. I guess that I can't really judge him from my lack of awareness. Look, I have to get going, I say, breaking the silence between the two of us. He clears his throat to muster up his courage as he steps closer, hesitates on a question for a brief moment, and then finally speaks. I knew you have no interest in me. I get that. But can I at least see you again? Not on a date or anything, but just to hang out. I feel as though he got off to a bad start. Why? I don't even know your name. My name? It's a joke, really. I much prefer if you made a nickname for me. The smile on his face fades into a slight grimace before his gaze drifts off to the side. I really don't like my name. Honestly, I'd rather be called something else, like a nickname or something. He must have a really horrible name or really horrible parents that he wants to dissociate with. Taking this moment, I figured there was no real harm in making a nickname for him. After all, it would be easier for me to remember. Well, how about... Mm, obviously, we're still going with Peter, because I remembered everything this guy has put me through. So, he's not Waffle anymore. He's now Peter. <laughs> how dare you call me Peter? <laughs> Wait, what was that? How did you know my real name? Ugh, I hate my name. Are you talking to girlfriend? Did she tell you my name? No, seriously, pick another. Nah, 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 Peter. Well, you're really adamant on calling me Peter, aren't you? Mm. Ugh. Ugh, fine. We'll go with that then. I don't know. I think it fits. It looked like a Peter. <laughs> you may not like it, but can you smile for me, Peter? Hmm. I look outside the window and see that the sun is getting low to the sky. Well, it's getting dark. I had better get home. It was nice meeting you, Peter. I turn to leave the shop. Hey, hey, wait. Peter calls out to me. I turn to see him smiling sheeplessly. Um, can I at least walk you home? Um, and I'm supposed to say, no, I'll be fine. Interesting. This really does feel like a whole different route now. Whole different game. Whole different feeling. Whole different vibe. His shoulders slouched and his smile faded, but only a little. He snapped his fingers to forge disappointments. Aw, oh, dang it. Rejected twice in one day. Today hasn't been that kind to me. But how about we hang out tomorrow? I smile and shake my head before putting the rose back where it came from. I work all this week, so I don't really have time for anything. Well, how about I stop by your work tomorrow? You do take breaks, right? I nodded, and leaving the flowers where they were, we walked out the shop together. Interesting. There's no blood! There's no blood! He's actually, like, default mode, I guess, right now. Yeah, that crusty ma and pa diner. And it's not that busy most days. If you just want to stop by and chat for a bit, you can. Honestly, the thought of having someone to casually be around sounded nice, but... I don't want him to get that the wrong message. So well, this is the friend zone route. Okay, I got you. But just a fair warning, I won't be able to talk much if you're not buying anything to eat or drink. I'll bring a few bucks then. Anything worth getting food poisoning from? What? <laughs> I chuckle as he smiles wearily. The milkshakes are the best I've had for a long time. I'll take your word for it. He looks over my shoulder and sees that the shadows of trees and buildings are getting longer. Well, you better hurry, it's getting dark. Why is he making that face? He nodded before turning around and taking his leave. He looks over his shoulder, smiles, and waves as he saunters further down the road opposite of my apartment. I watch him walk down the sidewalk for a moment, 
before going my own way. This is interesting. I, I like. I feel like I keep saying that, but like this is literally interesting to me that this is like a whole different route. Like this is. I guess we played the hate route, the love route. Now it's just friend zoned. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like this is all very similar. We get home, try to lay our head down to go to sleep, and then dun dun dun. Peter's watching us in the window. Anyways. Uh, let's go ahead, end of day one, and let's go ahead and continue and see what happens next. So let's see what differences will happen after we friend zoned him. Ugh. I rolled over in my bed. Every inch of my body is begging me to wake up, but I don't have the mental energy for that. It's like I didn't get any form of rest at all. I fight the will to wake up for a moment, rubbing my eyes before sitting up in my bed. Ugh, I'm a mess. And it is time to go to work. It's time to go to work. Okay. And I think this is all similar to the first time. So I'm just gonna kind of like skip over it. I lied. I'm actually gonna read this part. This is after finishing the route, Nina. And I realized the text actually changed between me and Lucy. So let's go ahead and you guys will see what I mean. So then he says, oh my goodness, I'm going to be late. I thought it was going to sound the same, but it's actually different. So let's go ahead and read this. Finally dressed, I rushed out of my bedroom, making my way into the kitchen section where I normally put my work keys. Hey, looks like someone's in a hurry. Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Yeah, no thanks to you, Lucy. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's the difference right there. Nina is so rude. I blurted out as I snatched my keys from the counter, glaring over towards my roommate, who had the nerve to look confused. Why didn't you wake me up? My debut of a roommate tensed up a little bit, looking both offended and startled with my sudden outburst. Good. Dude, I heard you rummaging around earlier. Don't pin your lazy butt on me. She tries to explain. Not even her excuses have any effect. That freaking bum. I then shake my head, focusing back at my predicament. No, I wasn't rummaging around earlier. I just barely woke up. You know I had to be to work at 7. You let me sleep in until 9? What kind of stuff were you and your freak toy doing last night, Lucy? My roommate instantly takes offense to this, flashing me the most glorious of birds before storming off into their room. You know what? Freak you. And I am not your keeper. And you are not my freaking dad. And I told you. And I told you oh. not to call me Lucy. Oh, we gotta call her Lulu. I think it's because she doesn't like Lucy because that's her parents named her that and she doesn't really like her parents. So maybe that's why we gotta call her Lulu. Once my roommate slams her door shut, I simply scoffed and made my way out the door. With any luck, she'll be gone when I get back. Maybe I will find a more tolerable roommate then. Interesting. So that, okay. I didn't know this before. This is literally me coming back to this part. That's sad. I hustled down the stairs and out the apartment building, but after running into Lucy, I slow my pace. I don't like that job anyways. If I get fired, fine. This day is already terrible. So why not just pile it on and just be later? Interesting. And as well, I also skipped this part, but I'm gonna go ahead and read it because I have a feeling that Nina's gonna be rude to TK as well. It's a Sunday, there's usually hardly any customers on Sunday morning, but even then, it doesn't excuse my lateness. Rushing through the front doors of the diner, I dash into the kitchen and grab my apron off the coat hanger along the far end of the wall. The apron seems to be the only place where grease stains don't get all over me. The fumbling to tie the apron on, I rushed over towards the time clock and stashed my time card to punch in. Wait. Mm, according to this, I already clocked in. Who could have... My attention snapped towards the sounding of approaching footsteps. Whoever it is, they're not trying to be discreet as they carry a clanking stack of dirty dishes back from a table. There you are. Where have you been? TK, I can't imagine Nina being rude to TK. I don't I don't see why you would be rude to I've TK. I've been covering your shit for the past 45 minutes without the boss even knowing you're not here. Yeah, TK's being awesome. TK rushes back by me as they gently place the dishes into the sink of soapy hot water. Wiping their hands, TK sighs loud enough to make sure that I hear it. They're like this all the time though, always acting like they're the big sibling to everyone and keep th keeping things in one piece. 
I huff as I try to think of an excuse that doesn't sound as pathetic as my alarm didn't go off, but the truth is all I have, so I try downplaying the issue, okay? I don't get why you're making such a fuss. We're pretty much dead on Sunday mornings. You clearly weren't paying attention when you came barging in. TK wipes their hands on their aprons before gesturing for me to look out through the service window. What, what the? Are you kidding me? Why are there so many old farts here? <laughs> I try not to raise my voice to a point that the fiber chomping boomers outside did not hear me. A tour bus came along. That's what happened. Now stop asking me questions and start waiting tables. TK hands me a spare notebook and pencil and nudges me out the kitchen. Great, here I am, hoping to have an easygoing day. So much for that. Okay, so it's not too rude to TK, but still kind of, still kind of rude. The breakfast crowd is a nightmare. Karen's and redneck grandpas everywhere with something up their butts. Some even going as far as refusing to pay because I didn't kiss their gosh darn feet whenever their coffee was not filled all the way or their T-bone steak wasn't cooked the way they wanted. Yeah, T-bone steak for breakfast. Not even breakfast steak and eggs either. An actual T-bone steak dinner with potatoes and steamed carrots. And then when one person refuses to order off the breakfast menu, there's a dozen more who follow suit. They're like, I want what that guy got. Such a hassle. Why couldn't the elderly be more like my grandparents? Pleasant and polite. Oh, okay, so this is the first time hearing about her grandparents. I think Nina, I guess, guess Nina has some good grandparents. That's good. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, I didn't miss that much, so. What I found out though, is Nina is being a lot more ruder. And you'll find out why that's important later on, guys. Back to present, Nina. I believe this is when the new dialogue should start. Like after the rush, so we get to work, it's pretty busy. And once we get through the rush, I feel like this is when the new stuff starts. Eventually the crowd starts dying down, most leaving to do some sightseeing, others staying in order to order more coffee or lunch. At least these are the kind of customers that mind their own business and are more focused on eating or talking. Love those type of people. Staggering into the kitchen, I let out a long sigh and rest against the wall, finally able to take a moment to relax. Ahem, <laughs> TK! I know you want to get off your feet, but you missed a table. TK sneaks over at my side, giving me a gentle nudge before pointing back out to the diner area. I roll my exhausted eyes and look over towards them. Can't you do it? I don't feel like having some Karen throw their cereal on me again. I would, but you owe me for covering your butt for an hour. Ah, oh, dang it, they had a point. With a groan, I lean myself off the wall, try to straighten my posture, and stumble back out. Here we go again. Scanning the booths, I check all the tables I had already gotten, matching their faces and orders table by table. I don't think I missed any... <gasps> A voice chimed in from the booth to my right. Hey there, stranger. And now I'm pulled to say, how long have you been there? There we go. I realized that the booth he's sitting in has no sign of anyone else sitting there. Um, wait, how long have you been here? A while now. I don't like harassing workers. You guys put up with enough as it is. That's true. When I go to restaurants, I don't really like to like give the waiters and waitresses too much because like they already go through a lot, you know guys? He mutters as he folds a napkin into what seems like a paper crane. Lovely. But, and I figured you'll, you'll like a break and let me buy you lunch. Well, that does seem all right. I could get away from this place for a bit. Fine, but not here. I'd like to get something from a street vendor instead. A street vendor? Okay, so instead of a home lunch date, we, we're gonna go to a street vendor? Interesting, the man beams as he gets up from his seat, almost with a leap in his step. Of course, what did you have in mind? Whatever they're selling, duh. This doesn't count as a date, by the way. Don't get your hopes up. You're being 100% friend zoned right now. All he does is nod, walking over towards the door and holding them open for me. Okay, tugging off the apron, I hung it up on the nearby coat rack and called out to TK. I'm going on break, continue without me. <laughs> I don't wait for the response as we leave. Crazy. She really said, TK, you got that. Have fun. Despite it being a Sunday, a lot of the businesses are still open and lively. However, street vendors take the time to not kill one another in competition, more like they're buying goods from one another. Peter is still beaming as he walks down the street like he just won the lottery or something. He waits patiently for me to decide which vendor to go to. 
So, what do you feel like having? I want to try something to see how he handles a little bit of crazy. <laughs> oh, Nina, you have no idea. Actually, none of these. I want to grab something from my place instead. <laughs> the stupid smile on his face fades, but not entirely. Uh-oh. What's he thinking about? Uh, sure, but seriously, I don't mind paying for lunch, you know? Oh, wait, he's being awkward? I thought that he would have been like, your place, yeah! No, he's like actually kind of being awkward right now, what? I know, but my place has food that's less likely to kill me. <laughs> point taken. He extends his elbow and hopes that I'll hook it with mine, shall we? Oh my freaking goodness. Rolling my eyes, I walk past him. <laughs> Come on, my apartment's this way. Peter drops his elbow and follows behind me in silence. Low-key, I kind of like this friendship. I mean, I mean, put aside all the craziness. I feel like if he wasn't crazy, he would be a good boyfriend. And he would be a good friend if he wasn't the crazy. If we took away the crazy part, being honest, guys, come on. I rummage for my keys outside of my apartment door. I take sharp glances over towards Peter. He stands with a blank expression on his face, taking in the bland decor of the hallways. Anything would impress him, wouldn't it? <laughs> he's just, he's just easy to please, I guess. Nina, there you are. Uh-oh, the landlord's here. Done. Oh my goodness. I yelp, completely off guard by the landlord standing behind me. Peter instantly becomes defensive as he positions himself between me and the landlord. Excuse me, you can't just sneak behind people like that. The old man unapologetically crosses his arm as he continues. The other half of your rent is due today. Judging by expression, his day is just as exhausting as mine. Fine. I'll talk to Lucy about it again. I mumble as I finally find the key to the door and try to get inside to avoid another lecture. Actually, I'll prefer if I come inside to talk to her about it right now. It wasn't a request. Huh. Alright, come on in. What? Okay? What? I allow the landlord to come in first. He's already scanning the area of our living space, probably to see any damages or mess that he could charge us extra for. There's an unsettling silence between the both of us as he continues to look around the place. She's not here, is she? No, she is not. I guess not. Lucy is naturally loud, and when she's not, she's <laughs> doing other things here that would get us kicked out in a heartbeat. Thankfully, we normally blame it on scented candles. The older man groans and pinches the bridge of his nose. I can't keep doing this, and you certainly can't keep up their end of the rent. Listen, you're clearly the more responsible one. She's broken her agreement one too many times. She has to go. And next I'm supposed to say, I can't pay the rent myself. I can't pay the rent by myself. But I can't pay for this place by myself. I can barely take care of my end as it is. Well, you don't have to. What do you mean? Do you have someone in mind? I ask without thinking as I'm currently panicking about the possibility that I might get sicked out as well. Of course, it's me. Peter announces, stepping closer to nuzzle me. No, we're friends that just met yesterday, Peter. No, I I guess so. Then again, I feel like Nina's really like, she's, 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 not, she's not being picky right now because you know, she's about to get kicked out. Honestly, this is far out of the left field that I had no idea how to respond. If I don't agree, then it might be my own butt sitting on the front curb right next to Lucy's. The landlord rolls his eyes before walking to the front door. Fine. Have Lucy meet up with me the next time you see her. I'll give you a call when I'm ready to start moving your boyfriend in. Saying this, he closes the door, leaving both of us alone. There's an awkward pause before Peter and me. He pulls his arm from mine and gently takes my hand into his. Mm. Do you mean it though? <laughs> He's like, can I, can I really move in with you? <laughs> See, I like this side of Peter. I know you said what you need to show him off, but if you're serious about your offer, I'll love to start moving in whenever you're ready. Listen, it's nothing serious, all right? I just need her out and someone to pay their share around here. You think you can do that? Peter smiles, his lip curling to show those things that I didn't notice before. You can use me as a footstool for all I care. All that matters is I'm with you, Nina. Oh my gosh! There he goes again. 
<laughs> making me forget about all the bad things that he's done, guys. Ah! That's rather dedicated stuff right there. I kind of feel bad now for treating him badly yesterday and like low-key friend zoning him this entire time. Well, at least he's finally aware and doesn't mind, so there's no need to sugarcoat anything. He knows he's being strung along and he's happy with it! Alright, I don't need a footstool though. Just someone to pay their end of the rent for once. What do you even do for a living? Me? Oh, I test various products like cleaners, household appliances, inventions, fast food places, so on and so forth. Actually, I think this is the first time I'm hearing about what he does to make money. You know, besides his murderous sprees. Like, I think this is the first time I'm hearing about his like regular day job, if you will. Sometimes companies pay me to test them out. Other times I'm simply paid to do videos, testing and posting them on social media. You're a content creator? Peter is a content creator this entire time? Wow, you seem set. Enough to live on my own, so I can easily take care of the rent for you. Heck, you can even quit your job if you like. Oh my goodness, that is tempting! So very tempting. I'll need time to think about it. I muttered, noticing that I might need to inform TK about the possible changes coming up. Mm. Oh snap, I gotta head back to work. <laughs> I forgot, I still work. <laughs> Here we got a guy offering me to never work again. But I forgot I gotta go back to work. <laughs> I took way too long of a break. Listen, if Lucy comes back, kick her towards the landlord's direction. He'll take care of her. So we're just gonna leave him in our apartment? Oh, uh, of course, yes. But what about your lunch? Just order something for dinner tonight and we'll call it even, all right? Cool, later, I gotta go. I don't wait for a reply as I bolt out the door and hurry back to work. This is so interesting. Like, this is like low-key the friend route. I keep saying this, this is the friend route. But like, I'm trusting this friend way too easily. Like, like literally in a day, but I still like this route a lot. Goodness gracious, what an exhausting day. Things get twice as busy, busy when I'm back. TK is furious with how sudden I took off. At least they're forgiving. I don't have the heart to tell them that I'm probably quitting because some guy dropped out of heaven and offered to pay for my expensive, all of my expenses. <laughs> oh my god. Dot dot dot. I'll just have to wait and see how well this guy holds up with everything. Okay. He's, we're gonna put him on like a trial run real quick, guys. Is he not here? I thought we are supposed to have dinner tonight. He's not here? Uh, finally home. What the? Don't tell me Lucy forgot to pay the power bill. Closing the door, I make my way through the dark to find the candle that we keep in the kitchen junk drawer. <laughs> Great, not only do we not have any power, but that guy completely bails on me. Ugh, maybe I might have been a little too harsh on him. My feet get caught on something and I come crashing down to the floor. Oof, what the? What did I trip over? Oh, um feel what it is okay oh my gosh what just happened what 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 was that what was it what happened my head dear goodness who did this huh what's going on who's there i can't see a thing i feel a hand running down my back as though to soothe me with long soft pets i feel warm briefs in my Don't ear worry. i'll take care Wait, did he do this the first time like this? Is... is that Peter's voice? I try to roll over and get a better look at the butt nugget in my home, but everything's too dark. What? Only a black silhouette appears before me. What? The freak did I touch? What, was there something on the floor and I went to touch it and then he like bopped me on the back of my head? Let's just go ahead and continue to day three. This is what we all came for, guys, to see. If somebody's, if they're gonna stay alive in this route. So far, I'm enjoying this though. I really like this route. I like us being friends with this guy. I didn't really like the murderous Peter, but like so far, I'm enjoying the friend Peter. Ugh, what, I, I'm back in my room? Oh, my head is pounding. What happened last night? Yep, yep, oh goodness, that's right. I wasn't alone. The one who attacked me, his voice was just like, ugh. What the freak? Why, why did he do that? Why did this person I met in two days and completely trusted into my house do that? <laughs> that butt-choking son of a- Oh gosh, uh, who could that be? 
Oh, it's probably Peter. I guess the landlord didn't give him the keys to place the place yet. Oh my gosh, I'm about to go and confront him, I think. They didn't give me an option to be like, was it a nightmare or was it Peter? They were just like, no, it was Peter. And we're gonna get him. <laughs> One part of me hopes it's Peter. I don't know if I'll give him a black eye or just strangle. Yep, yeah. Nina's ready to fight this man. She's like, this guy, no, I'm not about to be put up with this. No, let, let's get him, let's get him. I'm coming, I'm coming, goodness gracious. Quickly making my way towards the door, I take a deep breath and look through the people. Oh, it's the landlord. Sorry about that, I thought you were someone else. Paranoid enough not to answer the door, huh? No, just not eager to get visitors. The landlord doesn't seem to acknowledge my answer as he crosses his arms and continues. I had a word with Lucy about the termination of her contract. She didn't take it well. Yeah, I can imagine. The landlord seems a little uneasy as he continues. She, uh, she tried to convince me to at least keep her for another week, saying that she recently got a job somewhere and will pay you back from all the times you covered her. Oh yeah, Lucy had a job. We found that out in the last episode. Oh, I'm so sad that we're doing this to Lucy. Like, Lucy, she has a couple of flaws, but I love her personality. Wait, she did? Yeah. Anyways, long story short, she'll be by later today to start packing her things. So I suggest you make yourself busy. She's pretty mad about all of this. Well, she should have gotten this job sooner instead of bumming off me for three months straight. Getting a job these days is harder than it's used to be, kid. Yeah, that's 100% true. Anyways, if she needs some boxes, have her come to my office. I think I got a few to spare. Uh, and I'm supposed to say, great will do. Okay. Hopefully you don't turn up dead. I really hope you don't turn up dead. Great will do, I muttered. Well, I need a shower and get ready for work. Saying this, I slowly start to close the door, hinting to my landlord that this conversation's over. One last thing. He interrupts as he places his hand on the door, preventing me from closing it any further. Do you happen to have a third person living here that I should know about? No. But I do happen to not have a desire to be late for work again. Oh my gosh, Nina Loki so rude. Careful, kid. Watch your mouth. He sneers before clenched teeth. I could just as easily kick you out too. Yeah, don't mess with Dawn, Nina. Ugh. I don't want to go in at all today. Think I'll take my time getting dressed. Maybe a long shower. As we give him time to- What? Whoa! What the freak happened? I asked myself, noticing a small crowd of people surrounding the area. Does this mean I'm getting the day off? That'll be swell. Oh, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. There's the butt nugget himself. And Nina gonna knock him out? Nina gonna knock him out? Bah, bah, bah. Oh gosh, you had me worried sick. Are you all right? What did they say? If they blame this on you, I swear to goodness, I'll... We need to have a talk. I say in a firm tone. A talk? He acts with confusion. Why? What did I do? You know dang well what you did. I say, tugging on his shirt and guiding Peter over across the street near an alley, finally letting go and glaring at him. You know what you did, mister. You knocked me out last night. Why? He <laughs> looks surprised with this, not knowing how to respond at first as he tries to mouth out some kind of excuse. But me? I didn't knock you out. I was back on my place after we went back to work yesterday. Swear my mom's grave. <laughs> Oh my gosh, if she was dead, sure would be nice if she was. Peter has no chill. I cross my arms, showing that I'm not buying that BS excuse. You freaking butt nugget. You knocked me out when the whole place went black and I'm not happy about it. Peter doesn't attempt to lie any further as his shoulders slouch eyes to the ground. Sorry, I didn't want you freaking out that I was there, so I panicked. You are practically living there now, and you just so happen to carry chloroform with you when you came over? <laughs> He's like, <sighs> yes, <laughs> is that not normal? <laughs> and now I'm supposed to say, we're done. We're done. I say bluntly, not even looking into his eyes as I storm past him. Maybe this would put this dog in his place. Well, wait. He nearly calls out as he grabs onto my arm, pulling me back and gripping both my shoulders as he was nearly on his knees. Let go of me, I hiss, yanking myself away from him. His reaction was becoming a little too pathetic for my taste. Don't you get it? I can't. Have you been paying attention to what's been going on? Can't you pick up the slightest of hint that I'm meant to be with you? 
the freak are you talking about? Peter's grip on me moves down to my waist. The man now completely on his knees. He nuzzles his head against my chest and hums. Hmm. Oh, Nina. I love you. But you're not very bright. Ex freaking excuse me! <laughs> Think about it. The moment we met at the park, those times I saw you at the diner, how about always leaving your window closed no matter how many times I've opened it at night? Your perfectly sized closet? Oh my gosh, you were stalking me? You blame me? You're the one who is always on my mind. Yeah, we definitely been through this before. God, I this guy, this guy, I forgot, I forgot that was a line. I didn't know he was gonna say it again. I mean, we are in an alley and we're supposed to say, you're insane. Hey now, slow down. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> You're insane. You're insane. Peter smiles. Am I? It's because of you. You make me this way. And I'll kill in your name if need be. He purrs. I do it all for you, darling. He kisses my forehead and I feel sick. I wanted someone devoted to me, but this is crazy. He'll kill for me? What do you mean by that exactly? Peter doesn't clarify as he takes my hand into his, intertwining his fingers along with mine as he nips at my ear. I'll be over later tonight, dear. Who did he kill? He leaves and I'm left alone to ponder his words. I had to be careful around him. I didn't doubt what he said and if he's willing to kill me or anyone else could be at risk. He's dangerous. So who did he kill? Oh, my phone vibrates in my pocket and my shaky hands pull it out and see that it's TK. So what did he kill Don? I take a quick moment at an attempt to compose myself and he answers. Hi, what's going on? I try to steal my voice, but TK noticed my tone. Hey, uh, are you okay? Y yeah, don't, don't worry about me. What's up? No work today. Apparently there was a break in. Cops are here, but not giving me much information. Oh wait, there actually nobody died? Wait, Zora coming in clutch, MVP, what? I'm frustrated and unnerved by TK's testimony. Ugh, all that effort getting ready for nothing. Is that it? How long are we gonna be out of work? I snap at my coworker. Until the cops finish their work, I guess. What's wrong, Nina? Do you need, I don't need anything. Thank you. You've done enough. <laughs> You've done enough? What did TK do? Poor TK. Stupid diner, stupid TK. I think about Peter, his words still lingering in my mind. I don't feel safe in the alley. I need to go home. So no one is actually dead. That is crazy. My head on a swivel. I make a brisk trek back to the apartment. I feel like I can once again breathe when I finally approach my apartment steps. Hopefully I get some calm. Okay, but is Lucy here? I thought we were supposed to leave to avoid Lucy. Open the door, walk in, and toss my keys on the kitchen counter. I look around and see Lucy looking hungover on the sofa. Ugh. Hey, Lucy. How's it going? What a leech. Dang! Nina's so rude. She notices my disgust and gives me a glare. What? You're the one barging in here and making noise. Well, sorry, your majesty. I had to go to work today. A concept beyond your grasp, apparently. <laughs> Knowing that I know now, I feel so bad. Lucy sits up and groans at me. I'm going to my room. It better be to pack up the rest of your stuff. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Lucy shoots me a spiteful look, the anger radiating from her eyes. What the heck is your problem? My problem? You are my problem. You gosh darn sponge. Once I get your butt out and get someone who can actually pay their rent, I won't have a dang problem. Lucy's on alert now and mad. Listen, you butt nugget. You had no idea what the heck I have going on in my life, nor have you ever even pretended to care. Do you think it's been a vacation having to kiss your butt, do your dishes, pour your coffee, and do your laundry while you parade around with a stick up your butt? How could you just throw me out like I'm nothing to you? That's what I was thinking. Like, that's one thing about Lucy. Like, she wasn't just like, like, obviously she was like, doing the stuff, you know, the stuff, and not like paying rent. But at the same time, she was also like, you know, making, uh, getting up every morning, making her coffee, doing the laundry, cleaning the house and all that stuff. Like she wasn't just laying around and letting the house go to mess and leave her stuff everywhere. So her personality, I feel like Lucy's is good. I feel like every, every episode, I'm always just like, I'm on Lucy's back. She has her, she has her rough edges. But I got Lucy's back. All right, this, this is really bad. This feels bad going through this. Okay, I need to say, you left me with no choice. Dang, drop dead in a ditch. 
That's crazy. No, no, you left me no choice. You left me no choice. I feel frustrated near to the point of tears. You act like you had it so hard. I had to keep up rent to keep the landlord off both of us. You have no gosh darn idea how hard it was. You, you will never know. Lucy just storms past me out the apartment in a fury. I hear the echoing impact of her footsteps in the hallway. I'm sure the whole building can hear it. She's so dramatic. I flop on the sofa, my face in my hands. Ugh, it's not going to be fun when she comes back for her stuff. Ugh, I'm not in the mood for company. Maybe if I stay quiet, they'll assume no one's here. Damn, they just come in. Is it the landlord or is that Peter? Oh, for heck's sake. Lifting my head up, I get up on my feet and storm over to whoever has the nurse to just walk in. Everyone is still alive. Everyone really is still alive. You can't just walk into other people's apartments like that. You gave me a heart attack. You need a heart to have that. Besides, I own this place. You're just renting the space out. It probably wasn't a good idea to argue with the landlord of all people. What do you want? I muttered. This is the second time he's bothered me today. Well, besides the fact that someone recently got murdered and how Lucy stormed off the way she did, I figured I might check in and see what the heck is going on with you. What? There was no murder. They only looked at me with a pinch of confusion, though probably not surprised. I take it you don't like your job enough to pay attention, huh? I work in food services. What's there to like? Fair enough, but yeah, someone was found in the freezer, was stabbed a few times. They thought it was just a break-in at first, but no... Jeez, really? Maybe it was robbery gone wrong. Doubt it. Nothing was stolen. Wow, that's weird. Do you know who it was? No, my kid knows better than to give that information out early. Your kid? Is he a journalist? A police officer. He was the first to show up at the diner this morning. Wait, didn't Peter say something about killing for me? My thoughts trailed off as I remember how weirdly Peter was acting at the diner. Oh gosh, you had me worried. Sick, are you alright? What did you- what did they say? If they blame this on you, I swear to goodness I'll- Oh gosh, what if it was Peter who did it? What? Wait, who did he kill? Did he really just say, hey, you random NPC in the corner? Come here for a second. I snapped out of my thoughts, looking up at my landlord. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. The landlord frowned a little as he approached me, placing his hands on my shoulder. You want to follow me? You want to follow me into my office so we can talk about this? Talk about what? <laughs> oh, it's Peter! Just the guy I was looking for! Looking behind the landlord, I see Peter sticking his head into the doorway, looking curious about the conversation as he walks in. Oh, hey, Peter. I mutter, trying to force a smile. Is everything all right? He asks, walking up to me and taking my hand. Excuse me, Nina and I were talking. I know. And now Nina and I are talking. <laughs> I could see that the landlord was starting to get tense, his posture straightened as though to look down on Peter even more. I don't need these two having a freaking battle right now, especially if my suspicions are true about Peter. And now I can say, can we talk later, sir? <laughs> can you leave my boyfriend and I alone for a moment? No, can we talk later, sir? That's what we're supposed to say next. Can we, can we talk later, sir? I say in a somewhat softer tone, knowing that snapping at him will only make things worse. How about I stop by tomorrow? We can finish another time. He stood there for a moment, looking between Peter and I before letting off a huff from his lungs. All right, tomorrow. And tell your stick figure of a date here, dang, to mind his mouth, or I'm going to leave you looking for another roommate. He'll mind his manners, won't you? I nudge Peter while saying this, hinting the tall man to be careful about how he treats the landlord. The landlord can take a knife to the back, but he won't take back talk from anyone. Anything for you, darling. <gasps> He's gone back to this. Really? Really? <laughs> he cooed, taking my hand and nuzzling his cheek against mine. Mm. 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 As I turned my attention towards the landlord, the man had already taken his leave. I only caught a glimpse of a scowl towards Peter as he left. I needed a break. I swear. <laughs> With a deep sigh, I stumbled my way to the sofa and sit myself down, wanting nothing more than to take a nap. So, what did you want to talk about? <laughs> he really got the goal to be like, so... What did you want to talk about? I didn't say anything at first. The mixture of both annoyance and fear was starting to get to me. Uh, darling, are you alright? Did you do it? Do what? 
Someone was killed at the diner today. Did you do it? But what? What would make you think that? <laughs> you said it yourself this morning that you would kill for me. Did you kill that person at my work? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Who the freak was it? I freaking knew it. This guy's a psychopath. Letting out a groan, I placed my head in my hands, debating if I should just get up and leave or hear him out. And we gotta, oh, uh, okay, let's just, what? Okay, so, um, they actually said at the very end, because I've been reading it step by step by step, and I saw, like, a blank, and I was like, oh, wait. At the very bottom, they said, P I, I didn't even see this at the bottom. They said, Peter takes the last choice away from you. So this was the last choice. He took it away from me, and he just said, well, the better answer is to hear me out. That's almost as creepy as when John Doe, if you guys seen that video, he legit reached his hand and blocked me from making a choice. Can I stay? <laughs> yes, of course. You already went through the trouble of coming all the way here. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I just got chills. He said, actually, he just blocked my decision. That was creepy. But that's basically what Peter did here. The freak? What? Trust me, you won't regret this. Saying this, he gets up off the sofa and extends his hand to me. Let's go for a little drive around the block. I'll explain everything to you. Oh gosh, looks like I don't have a choice in this. Like, who'd you kill? How <laughs> do you just face a random NPC? Waiting parked on the curb is a worn down looking gray van. It's windows darkly tinted on the side. All it needs is a free candy sign, and it's good to have several people report it. <laughs> Peter opens the van door for me, help me inside before closing it shut. Like the gentleman he is. <laughs> inside isn't too bad. He keeps it decently clean with a cliche collection of scented pine trees on the rear view mirror and an ashtray filled with various change. Buckle up. It's gonna be a long ride. Hey, you never said anything about us going anywhere. You said you would explain yourself. Peter glances towards me with a dark glint in his eye. Stupid of you to get in a van with a killer then. <laughs> Nina's not that bright. I think we established that. You left me no choice, literally. <laughs> Dang, that, that look. Peter doesn't respond as he starts up the van, not hesitating to lock the doors while pulling out the street and onto the back roads. I try to unlock my door, but it won't budge. Frustrated, I turn my attention over towards Peter, dang near ready to attack him. I didn't lie about giving you an answer though. I just needed to make sure we were someplace where no creepy landlord can hear us. Creepy? Creepy? You stalked me, killed someone at my work, and are now kidnapping me. It doesn't get more creepier than that. Darling, my love, you don't pay as much attention to your surroundings as much as you should. I will admit the people in your life were close to being a threat. So they were close to being dead in his eyes. But seeing as how you treated them, it reassured me that their hidden intentions would never see the light because I treated them so badly. I guess in this run, I truly like for, first of all, for TK, I legit just left him at the diner. Like I just was like, hey, I'm going on lunch, bye, peace out. I didn't spend any time with TK, honestly. For Lucy, we didn't have that whole talk and she like gave me a little kiss on the cheek or anything. No, we legit had a whole argument. And, and Don, the landlord, you saw how we treated him? Oh, so that's probably why he didn't kill any of them. Then who did he kill? I didn't intentions? The heck are you going on about? He clenched the steering wheels a little more, the leather cover beneath his fingers creaking as his knuckles turned white. I may have been stalking you, and I apologize, but I would notice their disgusting eyes on you as well. I would note the way they would gaze at you as you walk by, your roommate, coworker, landlord. I knew if you showed any kind of interest, I would have to take them out too. So they all showed interest in me. And Nina being the oblivious girl that she is. Loki in real life as well. I don't think I would ever notice if someone liked me, not gonna lie. But that rude customer from yesterday, they had it coming the <laughs> They were like, I knew Aunt PC. Die. <laughs> I love that. I actually love that.
The rude customer had it coming. The Karen had it coming. I watched as you struggled with the rush yesterday. Map the faces of those who yelled at you, threatened you, threw food at you for the pettiest of reasons. I followed the worst of all, made sure they were local. He cried like a bee as I dragged him into the diner, reminded him of how he hurt you, how he didn't even deserve to live on the same lump of dirt as you. Peter gives a sinister grin as he thinks back on that night with an absolute pleasure. Ah, the fear in his eye was beautiful. Getting rid of those filth for you is a sensation that I will never grow bored of. I honestly wish you were there to see it, darling. Oh my goodness. I'm trapped in a van with my stalker and a killer. What have I gotten myself into? Ew, and the evidence is right here. Get the knife close. Can <laughs> Get the knife. He didn't even give me a Go chance. Go ahead and sleep for the rest of the trip. We'll be home soon. He didn't even give me a choice. He was just like, <laughs> she tried. Like I take a little inch, a little inch to grab it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. I'm happy. Everyone, I didn't know this actually existed. So again, thank you so much, Zora. Um, I was rude to everyone. And that's like, that's the true rude ending. Like the true keeping everyone at arm's distance. I, I enjoyed that actually, low key. Like, okay, so I wanted to come back to this knife scene and see if there's gonna be a different fight. I closed the compartment. Just like, I don't need me no see anything. So you killed for me, I hear. <laughs> You don't really say, I, I didn't say anything. Of course, that bothers you, doesn't it? I, I don't know. I mothered, curling my seat as I look out the window. Get some sleep. We'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? I could only nod, watching the world I once knew be left behind. It was bad enough I was stuck with this lunatic, but now I felt a lack of guilt for what he did and who he did it to. I just want to go home. And we are going home, technically. Anyways, thank you so much, Zora, for uh, letting me know about this option. I didn't know this route existed, so I'm so happy that there's a route that people actually, we can get all of them to live. But at what expense? This is the true rude route. And it's that's actually so crazy how rude Nina was. But you gotta do what you gotta do to keep the people you love alive. I guess. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought about this. Hopefully, this is my last Your Boyfriend video day three. Anyways, hopefully, I don't touch it again until day four comes around. <laughs> but I can't make any promises. You guys keep making some really cool comments that, I, I, I'm, that intrigues the Nina. Anyways, definitely let me know what you guys thought about this route. Um, and as for me, that's gonna be it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Nina, out.